This is Elliot Ross Dick, and in 2022, he ranked first in the Cape Unit 2 physics exam. How did he do it, and how can you do it as well? Keep watching to find out. Did you expect to achieve any of this? Um, I expected to get the results that I got all ones, you know, uh, because of my previous results, I got consistently got ones in CSEC and Cape Unit ones. So I expected all ones, but I was really surprised by the um by the rankings when they came out. I I couldn't believe it. I was very, very surprised when it came out. What was your initial reaction when you found out that you were ranked? Well, I found out, but my friend messaged me, my friend who doesn't usually message me, she messaged me saying congratulations. And I was like, congratulations. So what, what what's happening? And she sent me the merit list and I was like, no way. And I just kept scrolling and I saw my name three times and I, I couldn't believe it. I just instantly started messaging everybody and, and cheering and, and just, it was, I was kind of speechless when I saw, so those results. <laughs> Could you describe the timeline of preparation from choosing these subjects in um in Cape to actually preparing for the subjects? Okay, so from the time I chose my subjects for Cape, I created a Excel spreadsheet in September where I had the number of topics, the number of exercises in a textbook for each topic, and then the number of weeks it would take to learn that topic. And I started learning it on my own. I started making my own no notes from, say, September to December, maybe over into January. So for pure applied and physics, I think I made my own notes for pure going along with the textbook. I made my notes for physics going along with the textbook as well. And then I for applied unit one, I did a course in um a course online on statistics because unit one is essentially statistics and then after that mm -hmm. uh, when I finished learning and I started doing past papers I had all my notes down and I'm a kinesthetic learner so I am very good at remembering things that I write down and so as soon as I finished doing that, I started doing past papers and started looking at where the holes are in what I've learned, where I don't really understand. If I don't understand the topic, I go back into the textbook and do exercises on it. And then after that, but by the time the exams come around, say maybe mock exams in April, I would have been I would have been able to do past papers every few days. I able to knock out maybe three or four past papers for each subject or two or three past papers for each subject and then after mock exams is when I would start paper ones because mm -hmm. that's at the end of the uh, examination period. So how do you prepare for tests and internal exams? Well actually I never really used to study for internal exams unless it was an SVA. Um, otherwise I would have I would I would continue preparing for Cape, but as I continue preparing for Cape, as I continue uh writing those notes and that kind of stuff, I mean, that's kind of studying for me. Rewriting notes, rereading <laughs> notes, doing practice questions, that's studying. So all of those internal exams were just a form of practice. They weren't really exams to me. Throughout all of this, how did you stay motivated? How did I stay motivated? That's a good question. But the 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 for CAPE especially, I stayed motivated to do those math subjects because I really love math. Mm -hmm. um, so my passion for the subject kind of drove me to want to learn more and want to do well. Um, however, Caribbean studies and communication studies were definitely a challenge. So I think for those subjects, I just had to dig deep and... Mm -hmm. The drive to want to do well, the drive to want to get that one and the drive to want to achieve is what really drove me for those subjects that I had challenges with. So Speaking eventually, of... sorry, so eventually it was just uh, about building discipline for even like when I didn't want to do something, I knew that I had to do it since I wanted to achieve. Okay, so what are some challenges that you faced while preparing for the exams and how did you overcome them? The biggest challenge for me were, were those Caribbean studies and communication studies. Um, and I had to overcome it by 
you know, taking a step back. I'm, I was usually very good at school, very good at subjects. And those were the first subjects that challenged me and the first subjects that I was not getting the grades that I wanted in. And mm -hmm. so I kind of had to take a step back, humble myself and say, you know what, I need to go back, relearn things and take it step by step. So eventually it was about me learning how to write the essays again. I had to, and I'm a very logical person, so I had to develop a process and a plan for how to write the essays, for how to, um, for how to plan it. And I just kept planning essays over and over until I felt comfortable. So when I got a challenge with any subject, it was about taking a step back, finding a logical process, and finding something that suits me. Um, and yeah, that was really the biggest challenge that I have. Any other time I didn't really want to do Rick, like when burnout was hitting, uh, I probably would say that I just, you know, do less work, get the rest that I need. And when I'm ready to do work and work on mm -hmm. paper ones, because those are much easier. Um, and you know, it was really about paying attention to how I'm feeling with burnout. You know, I, 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 I paced myself. So I would not do, I only started doing heavy pass papers closer to the exam. Those three and four pass papers a day kind of thing that was way closer to the exam. And that was the final sprint. But before that, I was really taking my time going through the papers um, and really just taking my time because I didn't want to burn out myself. How do you balance school, a social life, extracurricular activities, and community service? Um. Well, actually, I have been in many extracurricular since I was very young. So I did drama, I did dance, I did music, I did community service, uh, social justice work. I was deputy head boy in QRC. Um, plan things security in music and and that kind of stuff and it it was always about where comes first if I have an assignment there was as soon as I could get the assignment done I have to get the assignment done there was no uh delay and so once I developed that discipline of where comes first plan out everything, make sure I have time to do everything that I need. It was easy to do things after that because, uh, and well, I was very lucky for COVID when CAPE exams came around because I didn't, I couldn't do anything else but work. I was home. So mm -hmm. um, I didn't really have to balance CAPE and, and exams. The only time I really had to do that was coming down to the end when exams were coming around, things were starting to open back up and I was starting to get back into things and performing mm -hmm. and that kind of stuff again. But by that time I had already, I was already ready for the exams. Mm -hmm. So there was no worry about needing to continue to study while I was doing those other things. I was ready. So it, it, I didn't really have to balance that much because of COVID, but when I did have to balance, it was a do it as soon as you get it. Why did you choose to study these subjects that you did? I chose math and physics because that is my favorite thing to do. It was my favorite thing to do in school. I wanted to do engineering before, um, but when I did ad maths for CSEC and I had to do the papers and the questions were really, the paper twos and the questions were really challenging me. And it was forcing me to think in different ways. And um, for my SBA, it sounds really simple, but I proved a formula for my SBA. I created a formula for finding the um the volume and proved and proved the formula with trigonometric um, equations. And you know, doing that process of deconstructing, creating equations, modeling things using equations uh in in physics where you have to use graphs to model real life situations that kind of stuff always intrigued me and that kind of stuff is what I want to study in the future and that do research in that um so I really just wanted to continue pursuing math in general so the last question what is one piece of advice that you would give to students sitting CXE exams this year um, for those students sitting exams this year, well, exams are right around the corner. Um, but the one thing that I would say is really necessary for any student sitting an exam in general is practice, practice, practice. You have past papers, you have 
um, questions at your disposal and those questions test your knowledge, help you to revise, but also teach you how to answer the questions. And so once you start practicing from before, by the time you reach the exam, it will be easy. Cramming for me does not work. I know it works for some people, but it's still important to practice answering those questions because in order to maximize your marks, you need to know where they are looking for marks.